Today I'm going to try to help you decide which guitar type is for you because I'm going to go through five what I consider the main different guitar types and I'm also going to be doing it on budget-friendly guitars to show you that yeah, you don't need expensive gear. Welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karjalainen. It's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. Now, in addition to using cheap guitars for this video, going through five different guitar types, I'm going to be using a Harley Benton Tube 15, which is a very affordable tube practice and gigging amp. And I'm going to be using a Boss SD1 Super Overdrive, which is a budget-friendly overdrive pedal. And then I'm going to be using a Strymon Riverside, which isn't entirely budget friendly, but yeah. Uh, most of the gear in this video is extremely affordable. And the guitars I'll be using in this video, I'll also be giving alternatives in the subtitles here somewhere. So that you actually have alternatives to look at and maybe help you choose something that's appropriate for you. Okay, so the first one is the Telecaster, which I already have here. This is in chronological order. So the Telecaster is a guitar that was originally made by Fender in 1951, if my information is correct. The original Fender Telecaster had a small headstock, like you can see on this Strat Tele Hybrid. It doesn't come with a trem, well, most often at least not the original ones, just like this one doesn't come with a trem. It comes with single coil pickups, two of them, one in the bridge, one in the neck position, tone knob, volume knob, very straightforward stuff. Now, this is an Earth Telecaster, which is slightly different from your regular Telecaster, in that it actually has that belly contour thing. Nice if you've been eating a lot, like I have. And this contour here. And the problem with a regular Telecaster, according to many people, is that it's uh, a bit pointy and a bit uncomfortable. I've never had that issue, but then again, I'm not picky when it comes to that kind of thing. I think most people consider a Telecaster to be a kind of uh, country-style guitar. Lots of people have played jazz on one. I think of a Tele, I think of Danny Gatson, for instance, and sometimes of Queen's crazy little thing called Love. But also, I think all of these guitars, I will try to show you that you can basically do anything with them. Now, the right tool for the right thing, absolutely. But when you're sitting at home, you can get some great metal tones out of a Telecaster, for instance. So, here are some sounds from a Telecaster. Or maybe not. <laughs> You can roll off the tone. Do that old Danny Gatton wah type thing. Add a bit of overdrive to get a kind of different type of thing. I'm using the Boss SD1 for this part. As you can hear, there is a bit of noise because of the single coils. That's to be expected. Now, 
like I said, you can get even heavier tones from a telly. For this bit, I'm using the Strymon Riverside. <laughs> sound exactly like a Fender Telecaster because it isn't one. But it's a nice alternative and gives you a kind of idea of what a Telecaster is. Next we have the Les Paul. This is a Les Paul type guitar, a single cut it's called, it's the Harley Benton. It's the Harley Benton single cut 550. The Les Paul came out in 1952 featuring a mahogany body and an arch top. This one has a maple veneer on top, so it looks really nice, but it's really thin. Binding around the neck and binding around the body, usually two humbuckers and slightly different controls uh, to, let's say, a uh, Telecaster, because each pickup has its own volume and own uh, tone control. And you get the pickup selector up here. Again, no trem and one huge difference between the Telecaster and the Les Paul, actually between Fender and Gibson guitars in general, is the scale length. So the Telecaster has a 25.5 inch scale length, whereas this has a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. The difference is that the, diff the distance on a shorter scale length guitar between these points is shorter, which gives less tension which again means that uh, it's easier to bend notes and so on. It's also a bit easier to reach. Personally I don't think it makes a huge difference. I'm used to the Fender style thing but for some people it can be an issue. It also has a tilt back headstock which uh, can cause issues with braking and I've also heard that it can cause issues with tuning but that's as maybe any way you have a guitar, take good care of it, right? So, um, these are used for all kinds of things. You can use them for jazz, you can use them for rock, you can use them for blues, you can use them for metal, think Zach Wilde, although he doesn't use Les Pauls anymore. For me, I think of a Les Paul and I think of something like Still Got the Blues by Gary Moore. Now, this one has been modded so that it has uh, custom handmade pickups, kind of vintage style ones. Uh, if you get one of these, depending upon the model you get, if you get a Harley Benton, it will have Roswell pickups, which I didn't like on this one, that's why we swapped them out, uh, or it will have the Tesla ones if it's the newer version, and those are really nice. <laughs> that because this was on the edge of breakup already with the telly now it's a bit dirtier because the output of the humbuckers is slightly louder than on the single coils but you can clean stuff up with the volume pot and if you're using a really clean amp it'll just be a bit louder <laughs> Thank you. 
adding some overdrive from the SD1. <laughs> Even more overdrive, you can get into the kind of heavier stuff now. <laughs> Next up we have the Stratocaster which was released by Fender in 1954. Now here we start to get something slightly different in that we have a trim. We have three pickups, all single coils, two tone controls and a volume control. Again 25 and a half inch scale. But here you get that in between type of sound which is where you have two pickups at the same time. You can do that on uh, on the Telecaster, but it's slightly different because the space between the pickups are, is longer. When I think of a Strat, I mean Hendrix comes to mind, Richie Blackmore, uh, you get the shadows, stuff like that. My personal, one of my personal favorites, Singwe Malmsteen. And also, I mentioned Gary Moore's Parisian walkways, or was it still got the blues in reference to the Les Paul, but Gary Moore played lots of Strats as well. Most often, the guitar is made of alder, ash, either or, but these days you get all sorts. This is the Earth Stratocaster, which is very similar to a regular Strat. Few, really few differences. And the thing is, with the Strat, you get that whammy bar, which is, I mean, Hendrix did a lot with the whammy bar. You get that in-between sound. So uh, you didn't get the hum and the noise with the Les Paul that you get with this, but you put it in between two pickups and you get no noise and you get that something that the Strat's really known for. <laughs> You can do all sorts of stuff with the guitar like this. You can do jazz, you can do rock, you can do blues, you can do, you can do basically everything. And for me this is a perfect kind of all-round guitar, so if I need to uh, have a wide variety of sounds I bring a Strat. Maybe something with a humbucker in the bridge, depends. <laughs> Thank you. 
then you add even more gain and you get, well, you get more gain. <laughs> That's the whole metal side of it. With two guitars left here, but I'm gonna show you one thing. Because one of the criticisms of uh, this type of whammy system is that it doesn't stay in tune. Which, when you set up the guitar correctly, is not really the case. <laughs> in tune but it wasn't 100% in tune when I started either so let's give it a bit more abuse <laughs> Even on a budget-friendly guitar, you can, if you set it up correctly and it's well made, you can get it to stay in tune. Most often the kind of slightly more extreme whammy bar abuse that I did towards the end there will put one of these Strat-style guitars out of tune. Even if it is well set up, it's to do with the nut, that's one thing. But if your guitar goes out of tune when you just look at the whammy bar, I've had guitars like that as well, then there's something you need to do about that. And now for something completely different. It's larger. And Leon's getting larger. It has no whammy bar again. And it's semi hollow. This is an ES335. These were made by Gibson in or released in 1958. Two humbuckers, like I said, semi hollow. Uh, mostly considered to be jazz, blues and rock guitars. Now, the semi-hollow thing, if it was completely hollow, it would just feed back like crazy. So there's a block in here that prevents that feedback, improves sustain and brightens the sound. But since it's semi-hollow, you can actually play with this acoustically. Well, you can play acoustically with any old electric guitar, even though it's solid body, but you get a bit more out of this. Again, the two humbuckers mean that there's no noise. This one actually has push-pull functions, but I'm not going to use the single coil versions because a 335 doesn't normally have that.
So, Chuck Berry's used one of these as well. That was my sad Chuck Berry impersonation. Add some overdrive. <laughs> a bit different again it has a tilt back headstock which could be an issue for some personally for me the thing between uh, the Gibsons or the Gibson style guitars and the Fender style guitars is there's something about the angle of everything for the right hand that makes uh, the Fender style guitars more comfortable for me to play I don't know exactly what it is I just feel like there's something all the time bugging me with these he has 335 and Les Paul copies as well as with real Gibsons but you can get this to do metal as well we have something like this. This is what's called a Super Strat. Now it vaguely resembles a Stratocaster. There are different alternatives when it comes to this. Actually there's so there are so many alternatives. Uh, it's exhausting. Usually comes with some form of humbucker configuration, either humbucker single single or two humbuckers or two humbuckers and a single coil. Usually ditches the second tone pot and just has one volume and one tone often comes with a Floyd Rose and these are the prototypical shred guitars when I think of a Super Strat I think of companies like Ibanez and Jackson uh, just to name two the kind of the most iconic one probably for me is the Ibanez Gem this is a Harley Benton which uh, I would say that I recommend all of the guitars that I've used in this video not sure about this. I mean, it's really cheap and you'd be hard-pressed to get another another guitar with a Floyd Rose for this cheap, but still it's a bit, uh, I don't know. If you want to check out the gear that I recommend, there are links in the de description to different price classes. Uh, those are affiliate links, so you will be helping out the channel if you buy something that way. Anyway, uh, Super Strat, really mostly known for shred but you can show up to your local blues jam with one of these. You can play country, uh, kind of. You can uh, do, do jazz, you, you can do all of that stuff, but really it's mostly this type of stuff. Maybe most known for this. And because it has that Floyd Rose, you can do stuff with it. You really, sometimes 
it, it can only be done on a Floyd Rose. Stuff like... <laughs> But here's the thing, when you have a guitar with a Floyd Rose and it goes out of tune, because that can happen, even on high-end Floyd Rose guitars when you abuse the whammy bar a bit more, this is what happens. When something goes out of tune, everything else goes out of tune and it's terrible. And actually the more I try this guitar, the less I like it. It has some issue here with, yeah. And really, that's the, that's the thing. There are other types of guitars, but I think these are the main ones and you can get an SG, but that's kind of like, a bit like an Les Paul, but not entirely. For me, those are the five main types of guitars. Uh, which one should you get? Well, wh whichever one kind of speaks to you. And the only thing besides that to consider is really try before you buy. <laughs> because you might notice that it looks brilliant. It's the best thing since sliced bread. And then you pick up one and it feels terrible. There are no guarantees when it comes to buying guitars. Yes, you will get a guarantee of some sort from the place that sells it, but it might be fine for a while and then you'll realize that it's not that nice. So a few rules. Try before you buy. If you can, buy a second-hand one because that will have had its infancy issues and infancy issues include stuff like frets starting to stick out when the wood dries. This has that, so one of the frets here, that's why it buzzes because it has been set up. The fret, it's starting to have fret sprouts as well, which is not nice. There are just two issues that you can have. The worst issues if uh, the neck warps, that'll just be unusable. But you can do almost anything on all of these guitars. They sound a bit different, sure. They feel a bit different, absolutely. They look a bit different, yes they do. So. Maybe look what your heroes play, look for that, and that will give you some kind of clue. So if your hero is Steve Vai, maybe you should get an ES-335, maybe, I don't know, but what do I know? Like always, this video has been sponsored by the good people over on Patreon who support this channel because I buy the gear that I review, and I warmly recommend all the guitars in this video, like I said, except for this Harley Benton. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description to my Patreon. You get access to my music, a bunch of exclusives and lessons, and you can even take that stuff for free. If you want to check out some guitar alternatives, there's a video here. Take care. See you. Bye.